Welcome back to the lounge. Year-end review time. In case you were curious what some of my favorite games of this year were or you were eyeing certain sales for 2022, I thought a year-end tier list was in order, which uh, that, and that's what we're doing. No fancy build-up here, that's, that's what it is. That's what we're doing. Uh, just something I want to clear up about this ranking, I'm rating these games in comparison to each other, so the stuff that ends up at the bottom of the list is just the bottom of this batch of games, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad. I like to think I have a good sense of what games I'll enjoy, and I'll play those ones, and I'll avoid ones that I don't think I'll enjoy. That's why a lot of my videos are positive and recommend games, that's why I don't have videos taking a dump on the GTA trilogy, or Battlefield, or Far Cry 6 because I haven't played them. Also, these aren't all the games that I've played this year, but they're the ones that I've sank enough time into to rate properly. I'd rather not rate a game that I've played like 20% of. And these are also games that I've played for the first time in 2021. Not all of these released this year, a lot did, but some are older and I just got around to them. Anyways, God, I, did, I just can't help myself with the long intro uh, list. First off is Bloodroots. I feel like this is like a solid middle ground for the stuff that I've played this year. It's really fun, it's got a great gimmick. Uh, it had a couple performance issues on Switch, which is where I was playing it, which like kind of ruined it a little. It, it just was ruined a smidge for me, but still really fun. Um, nothing mind blowing, but it's great for especially fans of Hotline Miami. BPM is slightly better than Blood Roots, but not enough to put it a whole rank above. I go back to this one pretty often, but I haven't cracked the secret to this roguelike, as in I'm not progressing very well. I feel like run 40, I'm doing about as well as I was in run 10. But each run is still super fun. I threw it in B, I, I might order the games within the tiers from worst to best at the end, but for now it's just the tiers. Up next is Carry On, um, I think this is the first game I played this year, uh, really loved it, breezed through it, I know some people weren't the biggest fans of it, I think Cody from Indie Game Pulse doesn't like this game, but I really liked it, I didn't think it overplayed its hand or overstayed its welcome, but um, I also don't think that we've cracked into the A or S rank with this one, I think it's still a B. I think we have, however, um, possibly, subject to change, uh, hit A with this next one. I really love Downwell. It feels like it belongs with the classic mobile games we played as kids. It's honestly that good. I didn't even know it was on mobile until yesterday, but even playing it on my computer feels genius and simple. It's definitely worth playing as just a relaxing, fun, uh, between other games game. Eldest Souls is also a B. I, I really hope this list isn't all Bs. I'll change it if things get a little bit too lopsided, but anyways, um, very fun boss rush. It has a lot of trust in its core mechanics. It's a really nice, fun, challenge that's a bit limited in scope. Genesis Noir might be the first D on the list, uh, which is really sad because I stand by what I said, which is that this is one of the most beautiful looking indie games I think I've ever seen. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it's worth checking out for that alone maybe, especially since I think it's still on Game Pass. But the gameplay was tedious and boring, and it worked horrendously with a controller. It's not a D tier game, objectively speaking, but in this list, from what I've played, it, it does have to go there. Ghost Runner, I also played at the beginning of the year, uh, and this is, I don't care what people say, this is an easy S to me. I've replayed it like four or five times already, I've done its hardcore mode, I've done its wave mode, I've done its time trial mode, uh, I've platinumed it twice individually since my trophies didn't carry over, I'm really excited for the future of this game, and I feel like everyone should play Ghost Runner. God Strike is a C for now. It's fun, uh, it's not the most intense or tightly packaged or visually stunning bullet hell I've played, but it's got a fun, interesting, time-based health system that sets it apart. It's got a decent challenge, not too difficult, it feels a little bit lacking in some areas, but it's still not half bad. Guardians is an easy A, great story, great writing for the most part, sometimes it's a little bit much and a little bit on the nose, but whatever. I'm someone who actually enjoys the combat quite a bit, it's very chaotic and you can pull off some massive damage if you play the right combos. It's got a really awkward ending, like one of the worst endings I've ever seen. Not to the main story, I guess. The end of the main story was pretty good, but some of the wrap-up stuff is just weird and forced and unfinished, but it's still the surprise of the year, and everything before the ending is amazing. Inscription is an S, maybe my runner-up for game of the year, especially Act 1. I'll admit that Act 2 is a little bit less my speed, but I still respect it for what it's doing. Nonetheless, I think Act 1 alone is more than worth the price of admission. It's amazing. I've said this before, I don't play card games. I don't like them all that much. 
much, but I love Inscription and everyone should play it. Lost in Random is a C, which is disappointing. Um, I enjoyed my time with it more than I probably did with anything else that's going to be put in C or D, but I have to be real here. It's got incredible world building and visual style, but the gameplay, which had so, so, so much potential, just feels stiff and hard to get into. It's a genius idea that was pulled off a little bit clunkily, so that makes it a bit hard to put it past C. The Messenger, one of my hottest takes incoming, uh, people might be mad at this, but I also think this is a C. I understand the love for this game, and honestly, I felt it too at the beginning, but I'd say that the first stretch of this game was a really solid high B game on this list, and then once it went Metroidvania, it dropped to a C. I started getting confused, and I much preferred the linear take. It's not that I can't play Metroidvanias, I've played a ton and I've beat a ton, but I, I guess I just wasn't expecting to all of a sudden have to pay attention to this game in a different way. I honestly just wound up using a ton of guides because I couldn't be bothered with it. Uh, maybe this is just a bad reflection on me, but I do think Messenger is a C. Damn, is it just me or was that kind of bars? Metroid Dread is in S, I think. I, I, yeah, I think Metroid Dread is an S. You won't find me gushing on the same level as some other people about this game. I still loved it, but it's just not in my top three game of the year list. But I mean, it's amazing. It's mechanically almost perfect. It has a great addition to the Metroidvania genre with the Emmys. It's actually my first Metroid game, believe it or not. I'm gonna go back and play more of them, but I think that this game does enough in this year to put it in the S tier. Monolith is another pretty easy A. It's so, so easy to play and get back into. It's a roguelike that's not super demanding, or crushingly difficult, the only real difficulty spike is the final boss. I'll probably come back to this game multiple times every year, it's just exceptionally easy to get into. Narita Boy, I... Uh, I want to put it in A. I love Narita Boy, but I feel... Actually, you know what? Screw it. This is my list. I'm, I'm putting it in A. Objectively speaking, in this list, if we're judging purely about the more objective metrics of these games, nice shot! It's probably in B. But if we factor in how much its good parts resonated with me personally, it goes up to an A. It's got a fantastic visual style, one of my absolute favorites of this year. It's got an interesting story. Um, I really enjoyed the gameplay, even if it was a little bit stiff. I think it felt stiff more in a retro way, not in a less competent way, if that makes sense. It sort of felt like it was emulating something, not missing something. Big fan of Narita Boy. I can tell I'm spending too much time on some of these, so I'm gonna be zooming through the next few just so that I don't go way over time with this video. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is an S, it's better than the first, and it's probably the second best Metroidvania I've ever played. The Pathless is a B, very fun and relaxing. It's not exactly a show-stopping kind of game, but it's a really good casual time. The Pedestrian, one of the best puzzle games I've ever played, very creative with its premise, very tightly designed as well. Psychonauts 2, uh, A. I, I, I think it's an A. It's so inspired and well-written and has some of the best level design ever, but its combat and platforming is just okay, and sometimes it's a bit of a chore. And I don't like how intrusive the cutscenes can be. The cutscenes are the best part of the game, but I hate the short cutscene, short gameplay, short cutscene, short gameplay, repeat pacing of this game. And I feel like those things hold it just back from being an S. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, S? T to me, it's an S. This might be a bit blasphemous to some people, having these two switched around, but Ratchet was one of my absolute favorite gameplay experiences of the year. It's maybe the most beautiful game of the year, and I think the story got better as it went along. It definitely got funnier as it went along. I was worried about that, but honestly, I, I just loved playing this game. Scourgebringer reminds me of Monolith, and it's nearly as good, but I do prefer Monolith, so this thing has to go to B. Skull the Hero Slayer is crazy fun. I need to play it more. I'm gonna put it in A for now. It's perfect for fans of Dead Cells, and it has probably one of the best gimmicks in recent years. I really want to put Solar Ash in S, honestly, but it's looking a little bit crowded up there, and I do think it's hard to put this game along with some of the other ones that are on there, but it's a very, very high A. It's as high as A can get. I'm very happy this game turned out the way it did. I'm surprised it got meh reviews, but it's one of my absolute favorites of this year. Splitgate is an A. As far as multiplayer shooters go, it's probably the one that's caught my attention the most in the past few years, so it's gotta go up there somewhere. Super Meat Boy is a B, a uh, cult classic game. Honestly, I really love my time with it, and I understand why it got the status that it did. B might sound a little bit low for this game, but nothing about it necessarily stood out especially and resonated with me. It was just a really well-crafted overall experience, and I, I am glad that I finally played it. I'm, I'm wanting to play the sequel now. Tales of Iron, uh, another shout out to Cody, by the way. He's the one that convinced me to play this game, and it was okay. <laughs> 
I definitely don't regret buying it, it was fun, but parts of it felt a little bit rudimentary and for whatever reason it just couldn't get its hooks in on me. I do recognize though that this is a really good game that's probably deserving of a little bit higher on some people's list, but I'm realizing that I need to make cuts here because the list is looking a little bit lopsided right now. Thomas Was Alone, maybe my hottest take didn't love it. It has a lot of stuff to love. It goes a very long way with a very simple concept, but as it went along, it felt less and less engaging. I found myself completing puzzles out of obligation to finish, and that's all. Uh, it just wasn't for me, I guess. Ultra Kill S, as far as fun factor alone goes, this is probably one of the best action games ever made. Simple as that. What the Golf is so ridiculously creative, I want to put it in A, but it's a little bit tough because it's not as tightly woven as the casual games up here, but it's not as expansive and multifaceted as the rest of the games on here, so it's going in B, but again, very high up there. I think I will order these a little bit at the end so that I can I can kind of organize some of this a little bit more. Lil Nightmares 2 is an A, but I'm, I need to move stuff out of A in the end, and that's going to be really tough, but it's super atmospheric and the levels are very interesting and have a great iconography and visual flair. I can safely say it's one of the only horror games that I actually wound up enjoying quite a bit. Next Machina is another game that I'd love to put in A, but I think it goes in B. I have a video up about this game. It's really fun and underappreciated for sure, but I can't put it along with some of these other games if I'm being honest. Returnal is an S. It probably is my favorite AAA game of the year. It's just so much fun and the controller was so integral to the experience and the visuals and the enemies and the guns and the weird story and the biomes. God, th th this thing is so cool. I'm very happy that a game like this exists in the AAA space. Deathloop is an A. Is it as good as critics say? No. Is it as bad as people who hate those critics say no. It got caught up in this weird controversy that it had no control over. It was dumb. Yes, the AI is stupid, everyone says it, but honestly to me that's okay because this is a murder simulator basically. Finding fun ways to explode people or toss them off cliffs or perform crazy maneuvers that somehow still counted as stealth to create a bunch of chain kills, it was fun. And then of course you have the great aesthetic and the great gameplay and the fun powers. It was a fun ass ride, simple and plain. Death's Door, also an A. I love the watercolor like visual. I wish I had some more bosses because they were amazing, especially visually, and I feel like this game really captures the core of its genre exceptionally well. It had some of the best side quests and NPCs this year, hands down. I love the creative designs and the variety of the characters here. Greek Memories of Azure is a C. Uh, I heard they fixed some of the issues that I had with it originally, which is nice. I might have to go back and play it a little bit. I don't know, um, but I stand by my review. I wasn't just kissing their ass just because they gave me a review copy and I'm now switching up on it. I do think this game is good overall. And some people will love it and its last leg is fantastic but some of the mechanics create a lot of wonky moments that can be really frustrating and the combat feels a bit too simple sometimes it's a game for some people but not for everyone guacamole 2 b both guacamole games are like middle of the road metroidvanias to me which is which is fine because they are good they both have some really fun ideas and the second one is better than the first but it is a step down from your metroids or your ories or your hollow knights i feel like most people will agree with me on that it takes two is the game of the year. Uh, the sheer creativity and commitment to this concept alone would have put it incredibly high on this list, but on top of that you have a good story and you make your exceptionally different gameplay sections all fun to play and satisfying to control, and you do it all in couch or online co-op with the friend pass and everything, like come on dude, this is an absolute triumph for the industry and something that deserves endless appreciation. I'll be real here, I almost put Just Shapes and Beats in S tier, I really really love this game but I took stock of it and I I was like, you know what? I think it belongs in A, but it gets my absolute, like one of the biggest recommendations I could give on this entire list. I love this game. The music is incredible. The way they work with the just shapes and beats motif is genius. The gameplay is easy for anyone to wrap their heads around, but that doesn't stop it from being really fun. I'm so glad I finally decided to buy this thing. I've been putting it off for a while for some reason, and it just ended up being way more than I could have asked for. Kana Bridge of Spirits is probably the most A game on this board. It came in, did exactly what it wanted. It looked beautiful and it played well, it was tough as nails on harder difficulties. It's a quintessential action game and like a lot of other games on here, I have gone in detail in this in another video and if you want to watch that, you'll get a sense for why I think this is the perfect A game. And we finally reached the last game, which is Unto the End, which I am putting in C. Remember, I still like the games in C, I don't tend to play many games that I know I won't like, so this isn't a diss, but while I enjoyed my time with this game, it did wind up being one of my more forgettable experiences of this year. 
Although part of that might be because a lot of the gold lying within this game is in the secrets and the multiple playthroughs, which I didn't do. For some people, this will be something really special, but I think the way that I played it, it wound up being a fun game that I appreciate, which had a bit of a lackluster ending, and that's about it. Okay, I don't want to go through all of the rearranging and moving stuff around here because I like keeping my videos around 15 minutes, only being longer for certain really big analysis videos, so I'm just going to zap to my final list and explain it really quick in detail. Bam, there we go, final list. I couldn't bring myself to put in anything else into the bottom two tiers. I know this list is lopsided, but like I said, the games that I play are lopsided, and even in relation to one another, I just couldn't think of anything that would belong in these bottom two tiers. I moved Ratchet and Clank down, it's like an A.5, honestly, if that makes sense, but I think it's just a little bit below that top rung, only because there are so many good games there. Monolith and What the Golf are basically games that I want in A, but I think they make more sense in B. Everything in A is genuinely incredible, and yeah, my top three games, which all came out this year, they weren't old games that I played this year, so that's nice, were It Takes Two, Inscription, and Returnal. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the list. Uh, let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with, if I over or underrated something. Um, a lot of you might know that I took a bit of a break for the past couple weeks. Not a break, just like a lightened workload, I guess. But now that we're going into the new year, my schedule is going to be back to what it was before, which is roughly one video every four-ish days. If you have any suggestions for videos, especially shorts videos that I'll do in between the longer ones, uh, I'd really love to hear those. Thank you all for a genuinely amazing first year on this platform. It's my first real year of doing this, and it could not have gone better. Um, I really appreciate the support. Thank you guys a ton. Uh, have a good break. Have a good New Year's, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.